they, they, they are models about uh, wealth distributions. Uh, <coughs> well, uh, these are different uh, collaborations in the last. Uh, is, is not good. Uh, Ah, is is yeah. okay. Uh, I think it's on, huh? It's on. Should be on. Now it's okay, but uh, there is not uh, light in the. Where the center was on? No, in the. In the Here. Okay. Ah, ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the, uh, this, these are different works uh, we have made in the last years with uh, colleagues. Uh, this uh, was a student of me that now is in Germany. Ismael Martinez Martinez, that is in Stuttgart, Germany. Jose Luis Lopez, that works in Pamplona, Spain, uh, Public University of Navarra. Elias uh, Ivanian, that works in uh, is uh, Iranian in Iran in Kasvin and if Pomo than uh, uh, wars in France. <clears throat> then, uh, uh, first, uh, I, I make the motivation of these uh, different words, uh, the presentation of exponential and power law distributions in economy systems in income distributions. And uh, later, uh, I present the different models we have made, uh, trying to explain some of the details of uh, these uh, distributions. And uh, finally, I present some results that we have made on networks, uh, putting these uh, models on networks. Well, then uh, society, uh, from an uh, economy point of view, uh, we could think that we have two phases. Uh, the give phase, where more or less all people we are here, we are the medium and low incomes. This uh, uh, around the 95% of the population we are here. This is the exponential law of distributed here, the incomes. And later there is the Pareto phase uh, that are the rich people here distributed in a power uh, law. These are the high incomes, no? <coughs> then these uh, words are at the beginning of the uh, century where uh, there were uh, uh, here the different incomes, for instance, in uh, USA, and, uh, the incomes higher than uh, $100,000. Uh, from here, we have the Pareto distribution. And less than this quantity, we have the uh, exponential distribution, the Boltzmann gives. And uh, this is similar for all the society, the Western societies in the, <clears throat> the capitalistic systems. Then uh, here in, in Japan also, the, for the uh, greatest uh, incomes, we have the Pareto distribution and the rest of the population, that is the biggest part of the population, is the Boltzmann distribution. Well, the, uh, one of the first questions uh, we could make is how it's possible that a system is stable with an exponential distribution of incomes. Well, in, in reality, there are other factors that change this distribution, but at the first approach, we have that. But we, we can make a very simple uh, uh, reasoning to, to, to see that it can be stable in a society that. If we take, for, for instance, uh, in Spain, the minimum salary, uh, 750 euros, and four times the minimum salary, three. 3,000 uh, euros, and we consider that the middle class and bigger than that, the high class, and less than that, the low class. And uh, we distribute here all the people in the uh, exponential distribution. Then uh, we can calculate that here is the 47% uh, of the people, here the 13% of the people, and here the 40%. Then if we take the middle class and the high class, this is the 60%, right? that there are more people than the 40%. It means that uh, there, there, there is some kind of stability in this, in this distribution. No? Um, well, how uh, 
the models that had uh, had been made for for these systems. Uh, they are taken for statistical physics. Uh, to particles that uh, collide, and they exchange energy. In, the, in these models, we have two ions that they interact and they trade and they exchange uh, money. No? They exchange money, they have an initial quantity of money, and after the interaction, they have different quantity of money. Uh, usually, all these models, they um, <coughs> um, uh, conserve the, the total money. No? Uh, no, normally, the local conservation, we have a local conservation, a law that conserves locally the money, and this, there is a global uh, conservation. Then these uh, rules evidently can be changed. Well, uh, the first models, or one of the first models that uh, appears in the <coughs> bibliography is the dragulescu yakuenko model, that is a very simple model that two ions, they uh, gamble uh, all their money. This is a random number. They put all their money on the table and they distribute with a random number between the two ions. And then uh, they uh, study the evolution of this system. And we see now what is the solution for this system. And also, if we change this law, and we put a saving propensity. It means that uh, the agents don't uh, play all the money in each interaction. If not, they keep some percentage of the money and they uh, gamble uh, the rest of the money. Then we have a saving propensity and it gives the result. Then for uh, when they uh, gamble all the money, we have the equilibrium distribution, that is the exponential distribution. And when they don't play with all the money, uh, it depends on the propensity, the percentage of the money. They don't, they don't gamble, then uh, we have uh, different distributions that these are uh, some kind of, um, of gamma distribution. They, they are not exactly gamma distribution, but the uh, first approach is like that. Well, the question is that uh, we have the equilibrium distribution, that is the exponential distribution. It appears in, in, in all the phenomena in statistical physics of equilibrium. The question is, is if we can make a model that uh, living initially from and out equilibrium distribution, we can model and show that the equilibrium distribution is exponential. We know by the simulations that it's the exponential. But another thing is to make a model that the fixed point of the system is the exponential distribution. Is that that we had made in a very simple way. Then if we have, uh, this is the index X, the money of the system. This is a distribu initial distribution of the money. And these are the ions U and B that they interact. And then uh, the probability they interact is PDU uh, by uh, PDU. Eh? And uh, the probability that they have money X after the interaction, uh, at least the condition is U plus V bigger than X. And the probability, uh, once they have uh, more than X, the probability they have X is 1 divided by U plus V. Then, after the interaction of a pair of ions, the probability to have X, that this pair of ions, U, B, gives us X money after the interaction is that. Then we, ha we have to integrate that for all the pairs of the systems that they have more money than X. Then the uh, operator acting in the space of distribution is that one. This is a dynamical system. A dynamical system where we have an initial distribution we apply the operator, and in the next time, we have another distribution. We put uh, the distribution again here, and we have another distribution. And the question is, uh, what is the evolution of this system? 
Well, this integration is, uh, has to be made in this part of the plane for the two ions U and B. Well, it, it can be uh, seen, this is with uh, Mathematica, that uh, we uh, take uh, uh, different <coughs> initial distributions. Well, uh, for instance, here is a triangular distribution. We calculate the mean value of this distribution and we uh, plot here the exponential distribution with the same mean value. And we can see in two inter interactions of this model how the initial distribution that is triangular evolves just for two interactions near the final state that is the exponential distribution. <coughs> Evidently, it's independent of the initial distribution. If we take here a gamma distribution, the next interaction we have that, and the next one is that one. This is the final fixed point that is the exponential distribution. It doesn't depend on the initial condition. Evidently, if we put another initial condition, that is the uh, PSY's distribution, you have, uh, already for the first interaction is here, and the second is here. Then, uh, clearly, this operator evolves to the uh, exponential distribution. Then, uh, the evolution of this system is the simplest one. It's the dynamical system, the simplest dynamical system that you, you can have. It's a system where all the initial conditions go to a fixed point. Well, many, many things in nature uh, 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 works like this. Um, well, then the idea is to iterate the operator T uh, for very few times you have already the exponential distribution, but uh, mathematically you need uh, the limit to n to infinity to go to the exponential distribution. And then it, it can be shown that is like this. Then for that, uh, uh, we have to define the space of the distributions where the operator is going to act. Uh, this is the norm of the distribution. And this is the mean value of the distribution, that is the mean richness. O sea, the mean value of the richness that each ion of the system has. And it can be shown that the operator conserves the norm. It can be seen that it's conserving the number of ions and the total number of, of richness. El, the system conserves the mean wealth, o sea, el, the, the, the mean value after the interaction of all the ions, the wealth of the system continues continue to be the same. Also, it can be shown that uh, there is only one fixed point for this system that is the exponential distribution, and the, there are no cycles in this system. And also, it can be shown that there is an H theorem for this system. Uh, it's a system, uh, uh, we have the Boltzmann equations, and then we have the H theorem for Boltzmann equation. The system evolves to the Gaussian distribution, the velocity is in, the, in a gas, and the uh, entropy increases in this evolution. Here is the same. The system evolves to the exponential distribution from any initial condition, and the entropy increases in each interaction. Uh, this is in H uh, theorem. Then all these results uh, have been shown, and the uh, uh, finally, uh, the theorem is for any initial condition, uh, any initial distribution uh, we give to the system, uh, to the economic system, it evolves to the exponential distribution. And then there is no any uh, black uh, hang in the system, there is no any strange force in the system, there is no any exterior uh, uh, strange thing. No, it's only the local rules of the system bring the system to the inequality. There is no other explanation. To make equality is necessary to act to the system, ¿verdad? as uh, we know some uh, political regimes. But, uh, <coughs> uh, well, uh, the Zeta model, this is the H theorem, 
it can be shown that the entropy increases and uh, in the evolution. Uh, here is a modified uh, model that try to explain the apparition of the power law terms in the distribution. It's a very simple model that uh, we made introducing a uh, parameter here. And, and uh, it can be uh, thought as the, a primitive banking system because it, it can be interpreted that the agents can take uh, um, length some money from other agents. Well, I, I prefer uh, to pass to this other model. And another model that is uh, more realistic in the, the other model can be uh, interpreted like a joint uh, venture between agents or between companies. Because uh, in the normal interaction, in the normal life, usually uh, we don't put the money on the table and we gamble our, our money. We, do, we don't do that like that. Usually what we do is, is more or less that. No more or less that, but it's a better uh, model. That is, one agent uh, buys something, the newspaper, food, everything in the supermarket, then uh, he spends some money, and uh, the money he spends goes to another agent that is the uh, agent that is selling selling the, the, the food, so the newspaper or that. Then there is a, an agent that uh, uh, lo loses money, yeah? the buyer or the, or the loser, and the, uh, other, another agent that wins the money, that is the winner. Well, then this uh, model can be constructed in a, a continuous way and we construct the operator for this model. Well, after uh, uh, I can say that the term of this operator that corresponds to the buyer part of the uh, agents, so the, 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 the loser of the agents, is this part of the distribution of the operator. And the, this part of the agents give us this part of the uh, operator. Yeah? Well, I don't enter in the detail of that. And uh, finally, what we have is the same. It's an operator in two dimensions, where now the region of integration is uh, like this. Yeah? And we, for each uh, distribution of money we have initially, we put here and we obtain another distribution. We put here, we obtain another distribution, etc. Then we have also and uh, dynamical system that is so uh, is more complicated than the than the previous one, but the dynamics is so simple as the previous one. It's, uh, it has a fixed point, and also it can be shown that uh, conserves the north uh, of the system, that it conserves the mean wealth of the system. Then the, the operator is well constructed. And uh, it can be seen that the final distribution for this system is still more inequal than the previous one. Uh, the previous one was the uh, exponential distribution. In this one, it can be shown that the equilibrium distribution is that one. It's a term of exponential, but there is this term, this potential term. Then this is uh, a gamma distribution. Uh. Observe that here is there are a big, bigger percentage of poor people and less percentage of uh, rich people. Then it's more unequal than the previous one. Well, in terms, uh, what we have made is uh, to put these models on networks and to see what happens. Then uh, if we uh, implement the models on the uh, spatial random networks, or those rainy random networks, for, for the first model, where we have the exponential distribution, the, uh, the final distribution pues, is the same, is the exponential. And if we uh, look through the system for the different connectivities of the 
ions, the, uh, the law, the local law, doesn't distinguish the different connectivities of the system. The, uh, for the different, the more connected ions, they have the same uh, quantity of money. It means uh, this is due because the law is symmetrical. Then, uh, uh, due to that, to the symmetry, the, the law doesn't distinguish the nodes. Then all they have the same uh, money. If we put that on Barabasi Albert networks, uh, power law networks, the same. For this uh, rule, is the same. The quantity of money for different connectivities is the same. This is due, I repeat, to the symmetry of the local law. But One minute. One minute. OK, I finish now. El, if we uh, implement the, yeah, the, the rules with the saving, is the same. Doesn't distinguish. But uh, what happened if we put the second model I explained, the more realistic model, where the ions interact in a way that is more realistic? There is a buyer, uh, a loser, and a winner. Then the law distinguishes the connectivity of the ions. More connectivity in place more money. The uh, nodes more connected earns more money. Huh? It, in a linear way. In the Barabasi Alberner works also. And it's, uh, I think this is more uh, near from the reality. Eh? The people usually that they have uh, a shop, ¿verdad? a supermarket, or a bar, or a restaurant, ¿verdad? usually it, it, the the, uh, the trees are going well, eh? usually they earn a lot of money eh? because they have a lot of interactions with many people and they, it makes that you can uh, earn more money. That it happens that it, the nodes more connected, they accumulate more money in the system. Well, and this is the uh, final, uh, that, that we have the exponential power law distribution in economic systems and different models we have made and the implementation on uh, networks. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, you can have the debt, and the, the, they have made uh, models with debt. But the debt, what uh, it makes is in the in the in the first model I explained that uh, the ax you have in zero, eh? zero euros, eh? and from here you have the tal. If you put debt, what you make is the uh, vertical x to run to the left, to the left, eh? at least for this model. Eh? For other models, maybe. There is some other uh, effects. Eh? Okay, thank you for the introduction. I would like, first of all, to thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here presenting this work. So basically, I'm going to talk about suppression of synchronization, uh, do this delayed feedback 
signals. And I would also would like to acknowledge the, my collaborators, so Professor Antonio Batista and Professor Danilo. They are from Universidade Estadual de Ponta Grossa, here in Brazil. And Professor Ricardo Viana and Adriano, Adriane Reis from Universidade Federal do Paraná. Professor Iberi Caldas and Kelly Yaros from uh, Universidade de São Paulo. Professor José Conin from Universidade Tecnológica Federal do Paraná. And Professor Alexander Pizarchik from the Technological University of Madrid. And, uh, and mo most of the, the people that I've been, I am working on, they are present here in this, this conference. Uh, probably uh, most of the people from the audience uh, already know them. And uh, so our, ne our neural network is based on uh, a structural connection matrix of the human brain. So basically what we did is uh, we have access to some uh, experimental results that were obtained by uh, these uh, researchers here, that is Lowe and his colleagues. Uh, these results, they were published uh, in this, uh, okay, I think it's almost in the end, uh, in this paper that is in this, this line. Uh, sorry, do you know if there is another? Uh, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so in this paper they, they present, uh, they did some uh, diffusion tensor tractography uh, to, they, they, did some ex, uh, they uh, did some experiments and they were able to extract this structural connection matrix. And so we have access to two samples one based on uh, uh, one of a subject that suffered of Alzheimer's disease and another from a subject that is healthy. So we could compare these two networks. And the original data, they, uh, it was based on the number of fibers between uh, 78 cortical areas. And what we did was a simplification due to numerical uh, uh, limitations, so uh, we, we changed, the, instead of using the number of fibers, we divided uh, the intensity in three levels, such we have uh, weak, in red we have like weak when there is a, a low, level, low number of the number of the fibers, and we have this blue for a medium number, and black for a high number of uh, number of fibers. So we have this, this two structural connection matrix, matrix that are based on the based on the cortex uh, based on the cortex. And something that uh, Professor Viana was interesting to know is how uh, how are the network properties of the these networks? But we had only two networks. So how we could analyze the network properties if you had only two networks? So uh, we invited, uh, I mean, that was all Diana's idea. So uh, Professor Konink, he is a specialist in statistics. And uh, what we did was to use uh, multivariate data analysis to generate uh, a sample of small world networks that would have the same properties of the experimental results. And what we did was to analyze the sample that, is, uh, that has around uh, 490 small world networks. So we analyzed this sample and we compared the sample with the experimental data. And what we observed was that, for example, when we analyze, uh, then we did all the network quantifiers, and when we analyze, for example, modularity and transit transitivity and assortativity, we can observe that this, there is this peaks here, uh, and this region here is what we call uh, probabilistic valley. That is 
a place where, uh, for the sample, we have abrupt changes in the network quantifiers. And here we have like this for the assertivity, and here we have like transitivity and modularity based on the non-local connections of the small world networks. And what we have, uh, what we have here is the is this probabilistic value, value. And what is interesting is that when we look where is this uh, the experimental data in this in this plot. It is inside this probabilistic value, and when we uh, and when we compare this sample of small world networks with the experimental data, uh, for example, for a healthy human, uh, we can see like average path length, density of links, transitivity, assertivity, eccentricity, modularity, but here the error is like could be like. We can think like the difference between the, the two networks, and we don't see uh, a larger difference between the real data and the simulated data. But when we do uh, the same uh, comparison with the Alzheimer's brain, uh, most of them also don't have uh, a strong difference, strong difference, but we can observe a huge difference in the assertivity. The assertivity is related, it's a quantity to evaluate the, the, uh, the tendency of nodes with a high degree, uh, nodes that are highly connected, to be connected to other neurons, to other, to other nodes that are also highly connected. Uh, and we observe that this assertivity measure, it's uh, like the difference when we compare the Alzheimer brain with the small world, it's huge. It's more like more than 60%, is around 60% difference. So uh, these are some uh, results that we, we submitted recently to cognitive neurodynamics. And I, I think it's, uh, I, I would like to, to share it here because I think this is something very uh, interesting. Uh, most of the time, when you are reading about uh, network properties, people talk a lot about uh, path length and transitivity that is also related to cluster coefficient. But uh, we do not see often people talk about assertivity. But here we observe this uh, huge difference between the simulated data and the real data. Uh, Oh, okay, so uh, going on with our model, so basically it's a network of network structure. So we have like the cortex network where we have uh, 78, oops, sorry, we have 78 cortical areas and then each cortical area we are going to consider a small world of networks. So uh, basically then for each cortical area we have a small world network uh, the neurons inside this small world network, they are uh, loc locally coupled by electrical synapses, and the no, uh, non-local connections, we are going to consider that they are chemical connections. So, and the neuronal dynamics, we are going to represent by the Rukov model. So, uh, and the Rukov model is a bidimensional model uh, that is, uh, consists of one fast variable and a slow variable. In the fast variable, we have like three terms that are important. The first one is the local dynamics that depends on the fast variable and the slow variable. And this alpha parameter here, that is the bifurcation parameter. So as we, if we vary this parameter, the dynamic of the system can change. We have this second term here that is related to the electrical coupling. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a local coupling. And we have this, the third term here that is related to the chemical synapses. And here we have this low variable. We have this sigma and uh, whole parameter. Uh, usually we kept them fixed. And basically that's, that's our model. And what we are going to study is phase synchronization. And what we define by phase synchronization is that 
we consider that we have like, for example, here is the fast variable for the hook of, narrow, for the hook of model. Here is the uh, slow variable. So we have the, this behavior here is what we call, we, we call burst, burst activity. So when we have the, uh, when we have this, these blue points indicate when these bursts, that is this, uh, it's a sort of uh, fast uh, spikes happening here. So when this uh, blue, these blue points indicate when this burst starts and we define a, a phase such uh, it uh, a phase theta that uh, goes from zero to two pi when we uh, when during the time of this uh, bet uh, during the time between these two uh, two points here, for example. And here we have just an example. If we consider for uh, globally coupled globally coupled neurons, uh, for example, here this these points here. Are, uh, we have like 100 neurons globally coupled. So this is our raster plot. And this is the time evolution. And this is the neurons. So for example, if you have no coupling, then the bursts, they all start randomly. As we start to increase the coupling, they, uh, the phase starts to, have, uh, to start to synchronize. And here is just the example when we have uh, a high uh, coupling strength intensity, uh, high coupling strength, then we have this, uh, this synchronization. So such the bursts of all neurons are start to firing together. And OK, this is for globally coupled neurons. And for our network of networks, what uh, we did was the, uh, we analyzed the Kuramoto order parameter. That basically is zero if the neurons are not synchronized, and one when they are all synchronized. So we evaluated the uh, parameter space. We can, we can see here in this figure A, uh, 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 the el electrical coupling here is not so relevant for the system, but the chemical coupling is very important. So as we increase the chemical uh, coupling, we can see that the system goes from the unsynchronized state to a partial synchronized state. Here in the figure B, what we are showing is that uh, if we analyze the Kuramoto order parameter for each cortical area, uh, we can observe that some areas are going to synchronize faster than others, and some of few of them are never going to synchronize. And we can see more or less here around 0 0.1. That is a sort of, it is when we have the, well, we could say the onset of phase synchronization. So after this region here, the neurons, they do a transition for the non-synchronized state to a partial synchronized state. And once we have this synchronized, uh, Network. We, we choose a set of parameters where the network is synchronized. We wanted to study how we can suppress synchronization in these cases. So to suppress synchronization, we apply a perturbation that in this case is a delayed feedback uh, mean field. The mean field here is the mean field of the cortical area. So we select a cortical area, and then we evaluated the mean field of this area. And we reinjected re it, re -inject it on the network. And, and we try, from it, we try to suppress synchronization. So basically, in this case, we have two parameters, epsilon f and tau. Tau is the time delay. Epsilon f is the coupling strength for, for the perturbation. And we have to. Actually, we have to answer three questions here. Uh, what is the epsilon f that we have to choose? What is the time delay? And how many cortical areas we have to perturb to suppress synchronization? So what we did here is we decided to analyze the parameter space for four considerations. So first, we, we try to perturb 25% of the network, then 50, then 75, and 100%. So we fixed here the 
electrical coupling and the chemical coupling. And what we observed is that uh, as we vary, the, these green regions here that we could call the uh, domains of uh, suppression, uh, they change as we change the number of perturbed areas, but there is no uh, linear relation between like if we increase the number of perturb uh, perturbed areas, we will increase or decrease the 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 domain of, of, of suppression. But we have this large domain here for 50% of the network, so we decided to <coughs> apply the perturbation for 50% of the, of the network. And what we observed is something that is curious, uh, is that for each neuron, we have a different alpha parameter. But if we, there is a critical alpha value that when we apply the perturbation, if the, the alpha values are smaller than this critical parameter, we will observe suppression of synchronization that we can see here that is the increasing of the blue region here. But if we select, if we uh, give to the neurons an alpha parameter that is larger than this critical alpha, then the neurons, instead of being suppressed, they are going to synchronize after the application of the feedback mean field. And what is interesting is that how we define this critical alpha. And we can, uh, we can find this critical alpha when we analyze the standard devi deviation of the Kuramoto ordered parameter uh, time series. Uh, and when we do that, as we, like, here is the mean alpha, so we give uh, a different alpha for each neuron, but then we, we, we do some, uh, with a very small difference between them. And what we did here is that we vary this mean alpha and analyze how is the standard deviation of the Kuramoto order parameter, how is this standard deviation changing as we change the value of alpha. And what we observe that is then when we are close to this critical alpha, we have an, an abrupt change in the, on a, on a abrupt peak, like here, in the, the standard deviation. So, and this peak here, it is, uh, it decrease, uh, its intensity decrease as we increase the chemical coupling. This result indicates that uh, the chemical, uh, as we increase the chemical coupling, the effect of the perturbation starts to decrease. So, consequently, the standard deviation also starts to, to, to decrease. And we have uh, submitted uh, these results to chaos solitudes and fractals. Uh, Okay, uh, another thing is, uh, people may say, so uh, what is the problem with this alpha parameter? So uh, when we vary the alpha parameter, most of the time in our works, at least, we vary the alpha parameter of the Rukov uh, model from 4.1 to 4.3. And what happens is that when we use this uh, range of parameters, we know that the mean burst frequency of the neurons are going to uh, increase linearly with this alpha parameter, such that for each alpha parameter, I have uh, only, uh, I have a different uh, mean frequency. So what happens is that if I vary, for example, alpha parameter uniformly, I am also changing the frequency distribution of the burst uh, with the same uh, probability distribution. And this, is, uh, this also has a connection with the Kuramoto oscillators, uh, as we have shown in previous work. So my final remarks are 
that the uh, fluctuations in the order parameters, they can provide information about the system structure. Uh, for Rukov neurons, the fluctuations, they depend on the parameters of the local dynamics. Uh, in our network of networks model, there is a critical parameter that defines when synchronization will be induced by the feedback and when it will not. And we have still some open questions, that is, what is the dynamical mechanism behind it? For example, uh, yesterday we have uh, a talk about fragile synchronization, uh, and I started to wonder, is, is fragile synchronization happening here? Uh, I, I still don't know, but uh, I'm you're going to look at it. Uh, we have also this, uh, the importance of the resonance that was also mentioned uh, yesterday in the Thiago Pereira's talk. We have also here, like Roberto and Bruno, they also have other cases in the Rukov model where we, we, you can observe fluctuations in the, uh, in the time series of the Kuramoto order parameter, and they, uh, and they claim that it's related to on-off intermittency. So uh, there are a lot of uh, things, uh, there are a lot of times in neural networks that we have observed these uh, fluctuations in the time series of the Kuramoto order parameter. Uh, and I don't know, we are still trying to understand if they are all related or we have different situations, but this is very often uh, observed in the literature, and so we are still looking at it. And I'm also still wondering if the same uh, me uh, phenomenon that we observed in this case could be observed in other models, but since we still don't have an answer for the first question, we uh, also didn't explore this second question yet, but it's, it's still open. So I think that's it. Thank you all for attention. Sorry? So the two patients yes. from the beginning, the, one, the, health one, the healthy one and the one with the Alzheimer's. Yes, yes. How significant are the differences between the two if you take larger samples? Do you know that? From the, the patients? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have here, but in the original paper from uh, Law and his colleagues, they did a... Uh, uh, they have a, around like 52 page. They they have an average network. Here we have, we just have one of each case, but uh, at the low work, they they have like a sample of uh, around 50 uh, networks, and they also have like some the values of the average path length and all this this stuff. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all. Let me start by thanking the organization for the opportunity given me to do this presentation. So, it's going to be brief very short and precise. I'm, I don't want to bore us with so many things. So just want to look at a new finance chaotic uh, system that has been designed by us. We're saying that due to complexity and diversity of systems in real world, there has been what increasing interest in presenting new systems to fit into it and also describe the phenomenon observed. 
So in order to achieve this, we have just designed a new QRT system uh, that is used to look at the financial and system that adjusted. So in this work, what we did was to describe a nine times 3D finance security system consisting of two quadratic non-linearities and a quadratic non-linearity. So a novel finance security system is obtained by adding a quadratic non-linearity to the finance security system that was earlier designed by Mao and I mean Gao and Ma in 2009. So that just it. That is the equation, the non chaotic one designed by Gao and Ma, where we have those states x1, x2, and x3 are the states of the nonlinear system with the following economic interpretations. Where we have our x1 that represents the interest rate, x2 is the investment demand, and x3 denotes the price index. A, B, and C are just uh, are constants, and they are positive uh, constants that are being used here. So in this work, for Gao and Ma, A, B, and C are also stated there are 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and 1. And those are the values that were used for their numerical uh, simulations. And in there, they got the Lyapunov exponent at 0 0.0930 0 and uh, minus 0 0.393. So that tells us that that system is chaotic. And the maximum Lyapunov exponent there was 0 0.0903. The, the KY that was gotten by them is 2.296. I'm stating this because it is relevant in my later discussion. And that is the strange attractor that was gotten by them. And you have the Lyapunov exponent also. Now for the new system. So what we did here was to add this term. That's the quotic term that we add that made a difference to the original uh, finance, uh, uh, what was it called? Chaotic system that was being designed. Our X1, X2, X3 are still the same. Then that parameter D is just a positive scaling parameter. And we are putting it on uh, X2 here, which is the investment uh, uh, state for this particular system. And we know that for, for finance, investment matters a lot. So for this, that's the Lyapunov exponent we got. And also, the maximum Lyapunov exponent was this. And our KY is 2.2364, which, which shows the complexity of the system. So what we got? By the time we now compare this, we found out, just as we have here, that the, since the maximum Lyapunov exponent and the KY, the dimension of the new finance chaotic system, are greater than the uh, MLE for the previous one. That tells us that this one that we have designed is more complex as well, more chaotic than the previous one. So that means it will be able to, I mean, the, the robustness for you to handle financial situations is there for it compared to the previous one. And that's the strange attractor that we got for it, as well as the Lyapunov exponent. So we now did circle simulation result, I mean, circle simulation to see if our theoretical thing will also be achieved in this way. And that is the, the schematic circuit that was used. The equations, I don't want to bust with it. It is there that was used to do this. And that was what we got using multisim. And that is very similar to what we also got here. That's it here. So the next thing we did was to design controllers, adaptive controllers, to control the new chaotic financial system with unknown parameters. That is the key thing that we have done here. Most of the other works have not been with unknown parameters. And we know that for financial systems, you know, so many things do change. 
So we are looking at a situation, a situation whereby the parameters that have been set there, let's say the interest rate and so on, could change at any point in time. So we are seeing, I mean, with this, we are able to control that particular economy into a stable state. Then we also went on to do tracking to a desired function. That is, maybe you want to, to drive that economy to a particular function or so, or a particular direction. We also see that we can achieve that too. And uh, we decided to track it to this function. And that was what we achieved. Then synchronization. We use the master slave uh, configuration for this. And we're able to synchronize the two systems that is evolving at different uh, initial condition. So this gives us the error dynamics between the two chaotic uh, systems when it's activated at a time greater than 20 seconds. We could see that the thing synchronized. That is the error in between. So basically, that is what we have done. And in conclusion, we're saying that the new chaotic uh, system with night time was developed consisting of two quadratic nonlinearities and a quartic nonlinearity. Then secondly, we found out that this is more complex than the previous one. And we also were able to achieve the realization using a circuit and simulation. And lastly, we were able to control it, track it to a desired function, and as well synchronize it. Thank you. We use a, no, for the Lyapunov exponent, using MATLAB, we can always generate the Lyapunov exponent. And the sketch was here, which shows us that, uh, OK, that is it. If I have what? An interpretation. 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 Yeah, so you explain synthetically the role of the different terms. Do you have an interpretation for your new additional terms? Okay. I would, okay. The thing is this. The additional term was d x raised to power 4. That's the quartic and non-linearity term. And because it is raised to power 4, then it is it, it will respond to changes, no matter how small it changes. You know, let's say if you do the differential of it, it is still, I mean, the, let me just put it in, in a way that, because it's raised to power four, it's in a position to respond to any little change in the economy. If our x is 0 0.1, and you now probably make it 0 0.01, it will still respond to it because it is raised to power four and it is noticeable for little changes. Compared to if it is just x, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01, you might not see the difference in a parameter. But when it is raised to power 4, and it reduces or it changes in any way, then it is noticed. And this one is able to capture it. And that was why we also made sure that what we used, I mean, what we did was for, uh, what was it called? Unknown parameters. So no matter what the parameter is, this system will be able to stand. That's it, Justin. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.
você porque talvez não sei no futuro você a gente ou você com outro aluno vai estudar isso se der aquele problema você já sabe também. você sabe não mas isso é super importante sabe eu eu que no nosso caso a gente ainda eu ainda consegui os resultados legais com até antes da, da quebra do ator né mas ah, é? eu acho que existem casos onde talvez você não tenha um resultado tão legal sem usar aquilo ali sem usar aquilo lá tem razão não, eu achei, puxa, eu achei genial a ideia, cara. E não, e não parece ser uma. E ó, No. Naquele livro dele não fala disso. É que, é que eu não sei até que ponto essa ideia é, no, é nova, né? É de 2003. Só acho que tem que ele tirar fora. É. Vamos lá, vamos tirar fora.